I'll try and avoid uh, cliches like a change of pace. <clears throat> Heidi Greco is our next reader, and she's a longtime resident of Surrey, whose latest book pretends to know what might have happened to Amelia Earhart, and she does a marvelous uh, book, let me tell you. I've heard her uh, launch this book, and it's... Uh, just one aspect of the thing she does, because I think she says she's also followed something that I did, was go and help people write that are passing time in prisons. Thank you. That's true, Bernice. You're my mentor for uh, helping people in prison learn to find their voice. Thank you. And yes, I have been so bold as to pretend I could summon the voice of Amelia Earhart. And I've written a book called Flight Paths, The Lost Journals of Amelia Earhart. And it's an extended poem, I suppose. It consists of little diary entries and poems. She really did write poems in her life. Um, some were published. Most of them, unfortunately, were lost in a house fire. Uh, but she, she did so many things. Anyway, this little book um, presumes that she and her navigator, Fred Noonan, crashed uh, on the final leg of their plane and that they managed to get ashore on a tiny atoll of an island and subsequently other things happened to her and I'm going to read one poem from a section where I imagine she's being captured by the Japanese and it is in a um, rather wretched camp. This is called From the Dirt Yard 5. One day there will rise a broken tooth unearthed, rag of hanky gone to dust, scrap of paper with my name, a map that will refute the lies did to the world, flickering newsreels fed like tinder, igniting the fuse of war. All I have is stone and dirt, Sticks I shape to points, semaphore I devise with only my hands. One day you will find a crusted locket, hank of hair, some missing jigsaw puzzle piece that almost spells Amelia. And a brand new, brand new poem, so new that it still has two titles, um, because I'm not sure what the title is going to end up being. For now, it is called Seasonal Adjustment, Fiery Skies. Even now at midnight, the sky is a fawning lilac, not quite dark enough for me to call it purple. Too much light bouncing off the local used car lot, its artificial suns that stand on guard. The moon nearly full, a much too brilliant orange, more urgent than the cautionary amber tone would be, warning us, slow down, danger ahead. This light so bright it almost hurts to look at it, like some rare eclipse, its threats of going blind. Orange against a background of muddy lavender, the clash of contrasting colors so false, this could be a high school drama set, stark, trying hard to seem modern rounded, orange, reminding me that soon we will all be growing citrusy fruits 
harvesting in spring, end of the only months with reliably granting rain. Along with new crops, there'll also be new seasons, spring, then simmer, followed by autumn, then hallowed water. I will miss the thrum of jets cruising overhead, misting drops of fuel on us, invisible, their long moan across the sky, a comfort in the night, message that the world's still spinning, someone's going somewhere far away. Thank you.